So we're ready to go. Elliot, you're ready to go? Yes, sir. Okay. Is everybody else ready? Yes. Am I ready? Okay. All right. We're going to call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Yeah. Kubicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. All right. We'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, with that said, we're going to uh, make, I'll make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of November 9, 2021. I'll second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kubicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. Okay, and before we go to open forum, I think we're going to go change the order up here because we have some conflicts in schedules. So uh, we're going to go go to the resolutions, and we will hand it off to Ms. Taylor to talk about the resolutions. So we have eight resolutions, which is typical for year end. I'm going to run through them pretty quickly. We do have a number of them that are emergency readings, which will require some additional roll calling. Um, please stop me if you have any questions. The first resolution is a one reading only for financial to supplement resolution 2101-2021, the Columbia Township 2021 annual appropriation and supplemental appropriation resolutions 2104, 2108, 2115, 2121, 2134, 2138, and 2144. This will be the last adjustment to the budget for the year uh, and uh, requires a, a very small adjustment to a fund and as I said it's just one reading only. Do I have any questions? I read the title of the resolution. May I have a motion and a second to pass the resolution? So moved. Second. S Roll call. Oh, sorry. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kubicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. The resolution is adopted in, in effect. Uh, on to the next. This is an, um, the next one, two, three, four, our emergency. Authorizing the administ administrator to enter into a contract with Adelita Construction to repair dro road drainage system at 6912 and 6914 Grace Avenue, dispensing with a second reading and declaring an emergency. We had a collapse um, a couple of months ago on Grace uh, in the road drainage system. It wasn't immediately known. Uh, the reason for it, uh, we had other agencies identify whether uh, it was part of their system and once it was clear that it was not and it was our system, we sought proposals from companies t for a repair and the amount exceeded, the proposed amount exceeded my authorization as administrator. So this is a, uh, authorizing a contract with Adelita Construction to do the repairs to our Drainage, road drainage system on Grace, and it's for $12,342, and it is an emergency. Do I have any questions? I just have a clarification. Um, this is still in the queue with the construction company to fix this, right? Like, it's not in the queue starting today when we approve this. Is that correct? That if we approve this today, uh, they can, my understanding is that they can get to it in the next week or so. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. I know that just residents have seen that for a little while, so this yeah. isn't delaying anything what we're doing today, is my point. N no, the, the company's schedules were not open to right. get to it, despite our efforts to secure the contractor earlier. We could have had an emergency meeting had the contractor been able to fit it into their schedule earlier, and they could not, so it worked out that it could go into today's schedule. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I've read the title of a resolution. May I, uh, May have a motion and a second to dispense with the second reading. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kubicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. So we've dispensed with the second reading. May I have a motion and a second to pass the resolution? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kubicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. May I have a motion and a second to invoke the emergency so moved. clause? Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kubicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. The next resolution, also an emergency, authorizing the township administrator to enter into and approving a contract amendment for police protection services with the Hamilton County Sheriff and the Hamilton County Board of County Commissioners 
for January 1, 2022 through December 31, 2023, dispensing with the second reading and declaring an emergency. Last year at this time, we entered into a three-year contract with Hamilton County Sheriff's Office. Um, at the time, the Sheriff's Office proposed uh, expanding level of service to address some rising demands. And uh, we said that we would revisit it at this time this year. We wanted to make sure that our Jed Z funding was stabilized through the pandemic, and it has, because this will be an additional cost. So this is a proposal to amend the original agreement so that we would have two 24-hour shifts, 365 days a year. And the additional cost is $49,000 to $50,000 per year and will be paid for out of Jed Z funds. Any questions? No question. Okay, uh, uh, you've heard the first reading. May I have a motion and a second to dispense with the second reading? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kabicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. We dispense with the second reading. May I have a motion and a second to pass the resolution? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kabicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. May I have a motion and a second to invoke the emergency so clause? Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kabicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. Our next resolution is, uh, the next two resolutions are for our fire services district. So it's a wonderful day here that we are able to, as a result of the, um, I know that I said that I would make this quick, but I want to again applaud the trustees for making the decision to put the Jed Z into place in 2014, because the only reason that we are able to continue to increase our police services and our fire services is uh, because the cost of those contracts exceed the cost of the levies is through the generous business investment through the JEDC. So again, a phenomenal tool. We would not be here having this conversation today but for that. So um, authorizing the Columbia Township Administrator to enter into a second amendment to the 2018 agreement with the Deer Park Silverton Joint Fire District for fire protection and ambulance services in the Silverton Fire District Columbia Township, Hamilton County, Ohio, dispensing with the second reading and declaring an emergency. Last year, we extended the Deer Park Silverton contract for our Silverton Fire District an additional year to line up with the expected withdrawal of Gulf Manor at the end of this year. And now that we have that agreement and it will be the end of February, we need a two month extension to cover the Deer Park Silverton I'm sorry, to cover the Silverton Fire District. And then the next resolution is the Deer Park Silverton's agreement with us to then pick up the Silverton District as well as the Ridge District once Golf Manor's withdrawal is in effect. So this is the two month extension for uh, $6,043 per month for two months for a total of $12,087 with Deer Park Silverton. Do I have any questions? Okay. So this emergency reading, so you've heard the first reading. May I have a motion and a second so to dispense? Moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar. Yes. Mr. Kabicki. Yes. Ms. Hughes. Yes. We've dispensed with the second reading. May I have a motion and a second to pass the resolution? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar. Yes. Mr. Kabicki. Yes. Ms. Hughes. Yes. May I have a motion and a second to invoke the so emergency? Moved. Clause. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar. Yes. Mr. Kabicki. Yes. Ms. Hughes. Yes. All right, the, the fourth and final uh, emergency resolution uh, is the five-year agreement with the Deer Park Silverton Fire and EMS District to cover the Silverton Fire District and the Ridge Fire District effective March 1 of 2022 after the reorganization of the Little Miami Fire District. So you're aware that I-71 and Ridge, at Ridge and Highland is our largest business district and the Ridgewood subdivision is our second largest neighborhood with 200 homes. So it is a very important district to us and this will, the Ridge district will combine with the Silverton district. So I'm going to read the resolution. Authorizing Columbia Township Administrator to enter into an agreement with the Deer Park Silverton Joint Fire District for fire protection and ambulance services in the Silverton Fire District and Ridge Fire District for 2022 through 2026 in Columbia Township, Hamilton County, Ohio, dispensing with the second reading and declaring an emergency. 
the five-year contract for the first three years will be $485,000 for the combined Ridge and Silverton district. And then the uh, fourth year, there will be a 3% increase. And in the fifth year, there will be a 3% increase. And the contract includes the typical termination options and other clauses. Do I have any questions? So I've read the title of the resolution. May I have a motion and a second to dispense so with the second reading? Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kabicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. So we've dispensed with the second reading. May I have a motion and a second to pass the resolution? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kabicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. May I have a second to invoke the emergency so clause? Moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kabicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. Almost there. The next resolution is a first reading only. It is an annual function of the township establishing by rule the notices of township meetings, dates, times, places, and dispensing with the second reading. Uh, we do this each year. It identifies when this body meets for regular meetings, what the protocol is if we have to have a special meeting or an emergency meeting, uh, and uh, there are no, uh, no changes uh, from uh, previously, we will continue through the pandemic to, to meet on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. here. So this is a uh, first reading only. We don't need any action to have any questions. The um, second to the last resolution is a um, Authorizing the administrator to enter into an agreement with the Christmas Lighting Company for 2021 Plainville Road and Madison Place holiday lighting season and luminary event and dispensing with the second reading. So this is the first reading. We don't need any action this evening, but um, the Christmas Tree Lighting Company has been working with Columbia Township to do the install and takedown for the Plainville holiday lighting for approximately five, I think this was the sixth year, and over time our trees have grown, the number of lights have grown, we are now up to over 21,000 lights. And so the contract to install, replace lights that are not working, and to remove and store all of that holiday decor has now exceeded my authorization as an administrator, and so each year I will need to bring this to your attention. Uh, and also, so we'll do a second reading next month, and um, I'm sorry, we dispense with the second reading. Also, the uh, I checked with a number of other uh, companies to see if there was uh, another company that did this type of work. I talked to Great Parks, I talked to Sharonville, I talked to all the communities that have lighting, and there is not. This is almost a sole source provider. So we uh, actually do need to uh, read this one and dispense with the second reading. So. Um, I have, do you have any questions? So I've read the title. May I have a motion and a second to dispense with the second reading and to pass the resolution? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kabicki? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. Final uh, resolution this evening, which is a second reading only. We discussed this at our first reading in November. Authorizing the township administrator to enter into and approving a contract for ESP media for video and production services effective January 1, 2022. Any questions? All right. So, let's see, this is the second reading. Um, I've read the title of the resolution, uh, and you've heard the second reading. May have a motion and a second so to pass the resolution. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Kvick? Yes. Ms. Hughes? Yes. done with all those readings so uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to go begin in about three minutes so not long
right, we're back. Um, <laughs> welcome again, everybody. Merry Christmas and welcome. And now we're going to go on and resume the meeting where we left, where we skipped over before, and we're going to go to open forum. Has anybody signed in for open forum? I don't think so. Um, did did, did either of you want to speak? Do you have Just say thanks for what you're doing. I appreciate that. Take that. Thank you. <laughs> it's nice to hear that too, by the way. Thank you, and thank you for the kind words you've said as well. Well, and publicly, thanks to the trustees and to Mike Clement uh, for the literally years of work we've been spent trying to figure out what is a, a financially viable uh, EMS service for all the towns, not just Ridgewood. But you really came up with a great solution for Ridgewood, and it has been a long, <coughs> hard search, and we are very appreciative. Thank you. Appreciate you saying that, and to add to that point, we just did a podcast yesterday with the two fire chiefs to talk very loosely about some of the struggles that the, the, all the fire departments are have, not unique to us, to not merge, combine, and, and the, the small fire departments and small communities, their struggle to survive just because of the labor cost and the the capital intensive labor of, of, of the fire equipment cost it's hard and there needs to be more of it and um, I've, I've always had big pushes to do continue to do more but they've all said it can't continue to go these small communities can't keep their own fire departments and it's hard I mean it's hard to have people give it up so that's painful and it's not unique to us so they said there are 37 fire and EMS districts in the county and they said that it cannot continue. Ultimately, they need the, co the shared services or joint districts probably at some point need to reach five to six, and they need to be larger and based on a number of different, different factors. So fewer and larger specialty districts to serve you know, rural, larger townships, smaller urban communities, those types of things. It was very enlightening. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things get in the way of that happening are strictly politics yeah. and emotions. Um, but otherwise, Pride. The, the Deer Park Silverton is serving Ridgewood is an outstanding, well-respected, uh, long longevity, have, you know, financially stable. It's a great fire department, and I think I think things will be great. So David, that podcast is accessible either through the Columbia Township website. Yes, or the Facebook we just page. posted it today. <laughs> To Facebook or even yesterday afternoon to Facebook and then I'm not sure if it's on the website yet or not we we got it either yesterday afternoon or this morning okay. and posted it and, and if you have any other it's suggestions really as to how to continue to get this stuff out so that we have more people that want to listen to it if, we, you know, if, if they don't want to access the website there's other ways to push it we're all ears especially would be great as well. uh, yeah. So, yeah. And okay I'd like to echo what you said is it is sad when a small neighborhood fire station closes like that, but the historic Gulf Manor, there are neighbors, and that's very sad. But I think that the Ridge Fire District, and especially Ridgewood, will, as David said, I think you'll fall in love with that, the Deer Park Silverton fire station. Um, I would encourage residents, and we'll do this as we get closer to the March 1st, um, have a m better introduction to them. Um, but the station is very modern. It's amazing. Really good firefighters are staffed to to support a lot of communities and so I think there'll be a lot of advantages and I can't wait to kind of see how this plays out and I hope that you still feel this way in a few months so thank you for saying and that. And they're eager also to do some community outreach come to yeah. some of the events and really get to know the, the neighbors too so I think it'll be a seamless transition so that said we will move on to reports uh, we'll start with the Honorable Ms. Heakin to talk about the fiscal officer's report. Thank you. Um, November, that it, we're in November, there's only one, we were, sorry, in November, there's only one month remaining in our budget year. The general fund ending balance is $3,233,477, which is a decrease of 4% from October. Restricted fund ending balance is $5,650,288, which is down 4% from October. Um, combined, the funds total $8,883,765, which is a decrease of 4% from October. Revenues for the month of November were $31,780. Expenses were $391,570. Year-to-date revenues 
are $6,092,080 and expenses are $4,560,513. Our next semi-annual settlement of property tax revenues from the Hamilton County Auditor will occur in April of 2022. The voter approved levy revenues do not fully cover the cost of the township's public services. Our JEDZ business revenues supplement the cost of services that exceed our property tax revenues. Thanks to Columbia Township's success in attracting and supporting businesses, we're able to continue to provide residents with exceptional services at a lower cost. Thank you. Any questions about the report? I'd like to put a, finer, a fine point on what uh, Fiscal Officer Heakin just mentioned. This is the first time in Columbia Township's history this month begins where all three of our special fund levies will now be subsidized by the Jed Z revenue. Police and EMS, uh, uh, road and bridge, and the waste and recycling levy. So with the vote last November, this past, last month, sorry, this past month for the tax cut, uh, we, we now begin 2022 with all three of our special fund services subsidized by the JUD. So that means we did not have to go back to the residents for a tax levy increase. And they not only are getting the same services, in some cases they are receiving expanded services, and particularly in the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office contract. Uh, for expanded services. So this is a great day for Columbia Township. Thank you. And to editorialize it even further is that was always the design of the Gen Z, which is to put us, as we always said, less reliant on levies and such. So it's doing exactly what it was intended to do. So I don't understand what that Gen Z? Gen Z. The Gen Z is basically about, what, 2014 Team. Columbia Township really to block some of the annexation efforts and also to increase our revenues, we in implemented a Gen Z, which is a, a joint economic development zone in our business districts, puts a 1% earnings tax on the, the employees that work at the businesses in the township, from Home Depot to 50 West to the Marymount Promenade, etc. cetera. Um, those areas, there's a 1% earnings tax that Columbia Township collects we had to partner with a, with a community. We partnered with Fairfax. Somebody has earnings tax authority to collect. We partnered with Fairfax to collect it, and it brings in now about a million dollars a year. Then you combine that with our medical marijuana deals we've done, which is instead of declaring a moratorium, we went and made, made business deals with the medical marijuana clinics, and that brings in about another half a million dollars a year and found new sources of revenues to the township, both between the Jet Z and medical marijuana brings in a million and a half dollars, and that's what Melissa was alluding to, helps us with some of these shortfalls and some of, you know, if we beef up the police protection, we're having some issues with the fire and how we're gonna have to go manage some of their short, short, their short in revenues, and it gives us the ability to have the rent revenues to do that. Let alone, we also gave money back to the neighbors and formed the neighbor economic development grants. Half a million. And then Ryan Lamar spearheaded an effort to even cut taxes on the waste levy. So we're trying to go as quick as we can, push that back to the residents, taking a leap of faith that it's going to continue. Because you don't know between, you know, I mean, by way of example, you can take the the COVID stuff. You know, there's some debates when people start working at home versus working, let's say, in downtown Cincinnati. To give you a better example, you start working out of your home, you have to pay the 2.1% earnings tax downtown, or now you're working out of your home, because that'll sting to different communities. So if a lot of people start working out of their homes, will the Jed Z earnings go down? And then the medical marijuana, how do people deal with medical marijuana during, one, it just began, in other words, we just began that, and now there's going to be more clinics coming in, more going to be allowed. So does that go down, or does it go up as people become more familiar with it? So we're not sure, but at the same time, we took a leap of faith and, and brought some of the money to give back to the to the, the community so people could, could <coughs> feel it. And, you know, so that's what we've done with it, and part of it is... So I'm sorry to get you off track. That's all right, Scott, I'm trying. We, we don't, I don't mind when there's so many people that don't quite understand it, they come out and continue to tell that story. It's one of the, 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 
the, the single, those two, two are the single biggest decisions, mm -hmm. me personally being involved, that I've been involved with in the history of Columbia Township, that and hiring Melissa Taylor. Those are the three biggest decisions <laughs> that, that I will, I will uh, put on my scorecard and say <laughs> I'm proud of those decisions. So that said, uh, well, I don't mind telling you uh, about them because so many people who walk into these town meetings and you have to remind people and don't assume that they know. But that's why people may disagree with a lot of things we do. But that is, that's a major, major, major difference. That brings in about a third of our entire revenues come from those two sources of revenue, which are found sources of revenue. That's why Caroline keeps repeating the fact through the fiscal stewardship. And there's so many communities that don't have the, the, the money to do this. So we're very proud of it, and we don't mind talking about it. You ask, I'm going to answer. <laughs> Thank, and you. Thank you. We have a public meeting once a quarter. Today just happens to be that meeting at 5 o'clock today in this very room. You're welcome to stick around if you'd like. It's pretty informal and quick. But we have a, we part with, as you mentioned, Fairfax and Columbia Township are on the board. So. We get to count the money. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. With that, we move on to any questions about the road superintendent's report with Mr. Fraser's report. Usually it's just Mr. Sarpezi, but now we switch to Mr. Fraser. Any, any questions or any comments? Uh, go ahead. I have one question. When the, how many more weeks will they continue to do leaf pickup? Do you know the answer? So to that? leaf pickup is through the day before Christmas. Okay. And the crews have already made it through the township, all roads, all houses, one thousand seven hundred <laughs> of them, twice. Yep. Uh, Dustin wears a fit or has on his apple a fit, what I call a Fitbit, but uh, uh, he registers sometimes uh, six. 12,000 to 16,000 steps a day when they're out. So our crews do what no other community does. Many communities do not have leaf pickup. Some do and it's they charge for it. Some do and they have a restricted process. Our crews clear all leaves that have been raked to the curb by the homeowners and they clear the road of leaves curb to curb including under parked cars. We have guys with backpacks and other such so on the first two loads they have already picked up 85 tons of leaves and when the truck is full they have to go to Ridge to the compost yard to dispose of it and then come back and continue so it is a time-consuming labor-intensive process and it, it saves probably who knows tens of thousands of plastic bags of leaves going yeah. into the compost or going into the landfill okay with that we move on to the administrator's report with Ms. Taylor okay I'll do a quickie um, John Zerbezi retired this is our first month as you said without him thank you John for your 24 years of dedicated service um, He's so used to coming here, even though he retired November 30th, he's been in the building almost every day <laughs> <laughs> since then. <laughs> uh, I promoted Dustin. That doesn't surprise me. Uh -huh. can't, he can't live with us or without us. Uh, I promoted Dustin Frazier to road and services superintendent. Dustin uh, has 17 years uh, of service here as a phenomenal uh, young man. And he came to Columbia Township from Sims Township, so he has experience in a very large township even before coming here, which we consider, you know, a, a custom boutique uh, services for our residents. And he's, he's just phenomenal. Uh, he had the opportunity, uh, he has not yet left, but he has the opportunity through uh, his church to go to uh, Western Kentucky for the mm -hmm. tornado. Uh, response and uh, because he is so skilled in terms of heavy equipment heavy machinery as well as he knows how to do any type of home building or yard project he is a any he, any he cooks and he goes to the grocery store he's a man of all seasons <laughs> that was the res part of the resume that we hired him for uh, <laughs> so uh, congratulations to Dustin it was wonderful that we had an in-house candidate that was that strong that we could promote uh, community engagement. We had our luminaria um, on December 2nd. I'll leave it to the trustees if you want to uh, go into any more detail on that. But what struck me, other than the phenomenal weather, is that the sidewalks were full of residents, baby strollers, dogs, um, and uh, it was just wonderful to have that experience. Even though it was a low-key event, 
uh, as we did last year and we did this year we're keeping it low-key just letting people who are comfortable coming out we're not creating any specific site that draws a large crowd but it was beautiful uh, and as I said a beautiful night beautiful event and people were in a great mood and, and uh, that's just was so great to see uh, a reminder to everyone that there is as we speak free ice skating happening down the street at 50 West uh, it's Columbia Township residents Bring your gang and skate free with the code that we sent out on your mailer and it's all winter long and then lots of great food and cider and other good things. And just to uh, clarify, it's only free for Columbia, Columbia Township, Township residents, residents as a result of our partnership with yes. 50 West, the trustees and 50 West. So we've wrapped up our town halls for 2021 and we'll begin planning town halls for 2022, take a break this month and, and possibly even January for the transition. So we held one in Ridgewood in September and then Wooster Corridor was October and then Madison Place is in November and just with the difficulty with scheduling in December, we're going to, as I said, we're going to take a pause. So we'll keep that. That's been a great experience and, and from my view, from the staff, and then also from the trustees, I know it has been for you as well. We're meeting people that we've not met before and having a chance to have two-way conversations. It's not just us saying, here's how things are. It's what are your goals? What are your dreams for your community, for your neighborhood? In our investing in our community section, the Neighborhood Economic Development, NED program that David mentioned earlier, this is the half a million special investment in our neighborhoods made possible by our first year medical marijuana revenues. The voting has been tallied. The majority of our neighborhoods chose street trees. A few did choose uh, designer street signs. And we're going to announce in January 22 in The Voice, a special news magazine, all the neighborhoods, what they chose, and then what the process is going to be, what I call a rollout for how we're going to uh, roll these projects out in the different neighborhoods and then also a schedule. Um, I'm currently seeking and uh, preparing to do interviews with some, some uh, arborists and some uh, project managers and other things that we have to follow for uh, state law of expenditure of public funds. Uh, of our seven neighborhoods that were not part of the direct voting because they had HOAs, they voted through their HOA. All of them except one has decided on their enhancement project and so of that half a million dollars, 135000 was set aside for our HOA neighborhoods on the same formula, the number of households, and we have already uh, paid out $95,000 to our neighborhoods. So we're just past a couple of months of the program being active and we're already hundred grand into improvements in the neighborhood. So it already has its sea legs under it and we're, we're um, out of the gate. The Plainville Madison Place pedestrian crosswalk, uh, the ANA safety, the contractor has been on site the last few weeks. We're uh, waiting on uh, a couple of uh, final pieces and we expect that the install should be finished before the end of the year and those rapid response flashing beacons will be working. Buckingham Place and Cambridge East, those are our next up two major road construction projects. Uh, I'm working with John Gotti at JMA and with Dustin Frazier. We are trying to go ahead and bid very early January. We're getting ready to do the bid advertisements. We want to get out ahead of projected spring extreme cost es escalations with labor materials and materials for road projects. And then I also am setting up a res resident information and engagement. Um, roll out as well so that we can get the information out and then meet with residents about anything particular to their property or the street parking sidewalks yes or no that type of a thing that's a quick question mm -hmm. can those will those projects be done at the same time or could they be done at the same time or is there a different priority we're going to bid them as one project okay. because they are close to each other and yeah. so they will have a cost savings for that good but they are not so close that it will be disruptive from a parking perspective yep. so what you know one is on the south yep. east west side of Plainville the other one's kind of on the northeast okay. so that's going to save us money as well as getting out very early before a lot of uh, communities typically bid for their 20 next year road projects two quick 
final piece is Little Miami Joint Fire and Rescue District. In November, we uh, hired a new fire chief. Uh, David, you mentioned he was part of our podcast yesterday morning, Chief Mike Sefke. And uh, he was on the podcast <coughs> and uh, Denny Meter. And it was really interesting. One other thing to add to what you were uh, sharing earlier uh, when you were talking to uh, Linnea. The, it was very interesting to have the two chiefs in the same room together and then for us to pose a question or them to raise something and then they would go back and forth. They would talk to each other and we were, you know, we were listening to it. <coughs> and it was, it was interesting to do that kind of in a panel format. Uh, and there were some really fun moments, uh, including do not burn your Christmas tree <laughs> in the fireplace <laughs> after the holidays. We, they've been on a run for that. Do not do that. So there's some serious <laughs> matters that David mentioned about the future of how we're going to be able to sustain fire and EMS services, or as they said, it's really EMS with fire because EMS is the majority. And then also some really lighthearted, fun, interesting insights to what they deal with and on a day-to-day -day basis. And the most refreshing part is the theme of this whole entire board is <coughs> they get along. <laughs> and they so do get along. That is so refreshing that you put them both in, and, and that not, that just can't be understated. Just can't be right. understated because that's critical in everything we do. Everybody's got to disagree in private yeah. and, and come out in public and, 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 and generally respect and like each other. So It was two leaders in a room instead of two egos in a room. Mm -hmm. Very refreshing. That was a great point. Thank yes. you for that. Uh, uh, final comment. Our joint economic development zone, Jed Z. Our quarterly meeting, as we've mentioned, follows this trustee board meeting, and um, our pandemic estimate decline in revenues was, for 2020, was very conservative, and the budgeting process early in that year, we had major concerns, so we put it at 20%. It turns out that the actual 2020 decline was only 10% for the Jed Z, and interestingly, we are, by the end of October, at 2021, our revenues are up 17%. So we've gained back the ground of the 10% loss for 2020, and we're ahead by another 7% for this year. And that is one of the reasons, and I had planned, I know we had to change the order of the meeting, but I had this part before we went down the resolutions where we added the cost here and the cost there, but I had included that because I wanted to show that it is the ongoing strength of the JED that we can afford and increase services that make us a safe and attractive and in-demand community. That's it. Any questions? No questions. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, any questions about the economic development uh, quarterly report? Well, I have one question. Can you say that the uh, sheriff, we had two now, 24 7, 365. Mm -hmm. What was it before? There were certain shifts in uh, lower activity times of the week that we had one patrol officer, which for a community this size is not. <coughs> unreasonable it's just the geographic spread that makes it more difficult and also I neglected to mention kind of running through the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office that I talked with Tom Carroll as well our my peer in Silverton and they have increased their cars from 1 to 1.5 we're increasing ours to 2 24 hours so we have a really <coughs> good uh, coverage as well as uh, backup mutual aid uh, a really good move by both of our communities at the same time Okay. Um, okay, next we move on to the police report with Lieutenant Neighbor. And uh, welcome everybody, uh, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everyone. Um, in the spirit of Fort Union getting along, I want to tell you that the Sheriff's Office is very happy to uh, join this, this additional partnership with Columbia Township. We are having a great time to uh, work with you and uh, expect to provide the same level of service pride, dignity, and respect for, for all the community members here in Columbia Township, so thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, in the interest of the holidays, um, everybody knows during the holiday season that uh, obviously there's a lot more cars out there, there's a lot more people out there shopping for the holiday gifts and throwing their presents in their cars and whatnot, so I want to remind everybody in the uh, community to uh, lock your rivals up in your car, do not leave your keys in your car. 
uh, hide your presents if you have to uh, go out and shop uh, and fill your trunk full of presents. Make sure they're in your trunk and not visible for the uh, thieves that are out there. Uh, that said, throughout the last month, as far as crime in Columbia Township, uh, we've seen an uptick in thefts, which is very normal for this time of year to see uh, additional thefts going on. It's very common for that, but it's uh, the majority of the, the uh, thefts this past month have been simply shoplifting at uh, some retail offices which again is also normal. Um, in the spirit of all the more cars that are out on the road, uh, December 12th, uh, or pardon me, December 2nd, the Sheriff's Office initiated the slowdown for the safe holiday shopping uh, initiative, which is basically increased patrols. So if you see a lot of patrol officers that are out on the street or more than what you're used to seeing, it's not, it's a, not only the additional officers that we are now having in Columbia Township, it's also currently for the next month, uh, month and a half of uh, additional traffic uh, stops are being done to slow the residents down for the interest of safety. So that's about all I have for this month. Thank you. Any questions? I don't really have a question. I wanted to mention, <clears throat> I think I've said this before, this report is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, to Jillian and your team, this makes my job and our jobs as trustees and administrators of a township so much easier. For those that don't see this, all kinds of statistics. I'm really in the math, so I love the statistics, but also a really high level kind of commentary around it. Um, like, he, like, here's a statement in here The Highland Ridge area continues to be a hot spot area, which isn't a big surprise for anybody. 80% of Columbia Township's crime reported in November. That's information high level that we need to know, right? And so I wanted to commend your team, and I don't know if you wanted to mention the commendations on the back. I would love to. Oh, yes. I would okay. to mention the yes. commendation that we did have. That's uh, awesome. First, first thing to, to speak to uh, Dr. Jillian Brown and uh, the intelligence unit are in the sheriff's office. This is a relatively new unit that we have uh, uh, started in the sheriff's office. And what that basically means is we have analysts that are working on crunching statistics and being able to spit out information for, uh, for not only the township administrators, as well as the leaders of the uh, the sheriff's office, we know what we are looking at and knowing where our problems are. So we are currently working on addressing some of these problems. For example, the shoplifting. We actually learned that the majority of those shop shoplifting are occurring in just a very few select places within Columbia Township, and we're addressing those situation those uh, issues by speaking with the management at those retail stores and giving them suggestions about essentially doing a security check of their businesses. Now, most larger corporations will do this, have their own security teams, and do that. This is an additional service that the Sheriff's Office is providing to the retail stores by going in and telling them and looking at it through the eyes of the police officer and explaining that to the businesses. So yes, you're absolutely right. I'm, I wanted to say that, I mean, I'm glad you brought it up because our intelligence unit is doing a phenomenal job providing that information for not only the township administrators, also the, uh, all the, the, the boots on the ground that I can pass back to my officers. Um, with respect to the, uh, the, the accommodation that we had, <clears throat> it's a relatively recent accommodation, but it does stem back from an incident that occurred back in July of this year. Uh, one of the officers, uh, Officer Howard Hoshai, one of our patrolmen here in Columbia Township, made a random traffic stop on a person, and during that traffic stop, started to get the get the belief that the person was being so honest about who they were and what they were uh, what they were uh, who, who they actually were it was their identity was, was really at the root of it all and he continued to investigate and through his investigation he found out he took the person to the justice center to further identify him for his traffic violation in addition he found out that that person had a warrant for murder out of, out of Oklahoma City Oklahoma um, and it didn't come to the it didn't even it wasn't even mentioned until a uh, family member of the victim contacted the sheriff's office and said they wanted to tell the officer thank you for doing your job and, and such a phenomenal job for fully investigating and bringing this man to justice they can now sleep and stop crying so it was a very heartfelt uh, message that was given to the sheriff's office about officer Hoshite's dedication and service to his job and uh, so we decided to put him in for accommodation, and he received the uh, department's uh, divisional accommodation for uh, outstanding service. So. Great, thanks for sharing that. Thank you. Awesome stuff to hear.
Okay, with that, we move on to the fire reports of the Little Miami Fire District and the Deer Park Silverton Fire District. I know we've covered some of that, but Mr. Lamar, you take it. I don't think I have anything to add other than um, <clears throat> more to come on the transition over the next couple of months. But I wanted to mention, I don't know if you were, the Breakfast with Santa that we had and um, Chief, yeah, um, Chief Timmer's retirement. So Chief Timmer served um, Madison Place, Fairfax for over 40 years and he retired and he was at the Breakfast with Santa, which is a tradition in Fairfax they've had for a long time. They didn't have it last year in 2020 due to COVID, but it was, um, you know, it was storming on Saturday morning. It was a right after the big storms that damaged most of Kentucky and a little bit in Ohio. Um, but there was an amazing turnout. It was great to see the new chief, uh, Mike there. Um, almost all the firemen were there serving pancakes and sausage and it was an amazing Santa. I didn't think people would be there at 8 a.m. It started at 8 a.m. I got there about 8.15 and it was packed. And um, so a great community event that sometimes we forget about is how the fire department is entrenched in our neighborhood and wants to be part of the community. And so I would encourage, I think that our new chief really wants to be involved in the community. You'll probably see him out a lot, both um, Chief Matter and um, Chief Sifke. Um, you'll see them both out um, in the community. So I just want to mention that. I don't know if you want to add anything, but. And uh, the Little Miami Joint Fire District Board monthly is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Oh yeah. And typically it is uh, rotates between Golf Manor and Fairfax. However, it will be uh, <laughs> uh, Terry Timmer's last meeting as uh, a staff member. And so because he started out with the Madison Place Fire Department, the meeting is going to be held there and we're going to have a cake and coffee and, and such in his alma mater, so to speak. Can I get the Erling Creek up the heat, huh? What, at the cruise are going over. <laughs> cruise are going over. We have the whole, the whole protocol. Good. Set up. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, trustees reports. Anything to report? Nothing to add. Nothing to add either. And then we move on. We've already done the, uh, well, let's go to the communications. Any questions about any of the communications? We've covered all the luminaria, the Santa, the skating, and everything that we've put out this month. Yes, we've already done the resolutions beginning of the meeting. So that, and uh, we're going to move into executive session. So there's really nothing to take place after this. Correct. So I would tell everybody that's here, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, <coughs> Happy New Year. And uh, we're moving to executive session, and then we're just going to dismiss the meeting. So I don't know if there's any reason to hang around. So thanks for coming. Thanks for being a part of the community. Cheers. 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 Can you tell me who the new fire chief is? Mike, S-I-E, F as in Frank, K as in Kappa, E. Do we need a motion? <laughs> We have to make a motion move into executive section. Session. Oh, Do yeah. I hear a second? I'll second. <laughs> Roll call. Sorry. Mr. Lamar. Yes. Mr. Kubicki. Yes. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Especially <laughs> <laughs> short.